Welcome back, and we're switching the conversation into all things summer camp. Of course, though, we are joined by the Ministry of Education to talk to us about their Let's Catch Up Summer Camp. We're joined by Diane Mejia, the CEO of the Ministry of Education, Good as morning. well as Yolanda Gongora, the Chief Education Officer over at the Ministry of Education. Good morning, Good morning. ladies. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks Good for morning. having us. It's Pleasure. lovely to have you guys here with us. Well, let's get things started. Um, let's catch up summer camp. Uh, when we think summer, we think of relaxing out of the, the, the school <laughs> setting, out of the classrooms. But you guys are giving them an opportunity to catch up on what they might miss out, right. but also mm -hmm. to get them, I assume, prepared for the new right. uh, class that they're going into. Let's talk about it. So really the idea for this camp is actually, this is the second version of the Let's Catch Up Summer Camp. We did this also last year. Mm -hmm. And it was born out of the realization that uh, our students need to catch up. Obviously, you know, everything we've, we've all spoken about so many times, the effects of COVID, mm -hmm. especially on literacy and numeracy, mm -hmm. and recognizing that this has, uh, not being in school for two years, impacted students at all levels. We chose last year when we were looking at it to focus on students ages five to nine, mm -hmm. specifically on literacy and numeracy. And last year we were really ambitious and we ran an eight week camp. Um, That's the entire summer. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. Now, now, for context, it's not the whole day. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, mm -hmm. But we, we really, we thought looking back at it, it was effective in a lot of ways. Um, and so in, in preparing for this summer, one of the biggest shifts that we did was we cut the eight weeks down to four okay. because this is a really different sort of camp. This is a camp where, yes, the focus is on reading and math um, and it's ages five to nine, so there are two groups. But with this camp, what we have um, are master teachers who are identified and the master teachers teach the lessons from a studio. And those lessons are live streamed. Okay. So parents sign up their children for attendance at schools, which we call for the purpose of the camp learning centers. So we have learning centers across the country, 20 of them. Each learning center has four classrooms that are prepared. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter what school your child goes to. Okay. Anywhere your child is across the country, you can find a learning sure, center sure. close by and you sign them up. And then in the center, um, the lessons are streamed. So it's, it's and there's a, a teacher there who's a facilitator okay. who is there to support whatever the students need. So, so this camp is really combining technology mm -hmm. with traditional teaching methods yeah. here. Yeah, so, so what I'm gathering is that uh, all the kids will have access to uh, one uh, uh, one set of one master well uh, one master teacher at a time at a right. time at a time correct. right and so what's the uh, extent of these lessons that they will engage in and how how does this approach uh, I, I don't know boost their ability to learn and to actually receive this information we want to um ensure that the new curriculum that we piloted yeah. in primary schools, that the students are able to understand the connection of competencies. Yeah. I wanted to also add that if you are unable to register to one of the centers, you can also follow the, uh, the, right. the summer camp through the 501 Academy YouTube channel. Okay. Um, yes. So we encourage parents because a number of parents are saying, well, my school is not listed on the center. Mm -hmm. And so we are advising parents, if you are unable to attend or register your child, because I, the numbers are, it's only 20 and we have over 300 schools. Wow. So the center is, um, you know, limited uh, because of the access that we also want to give to, to children that are not necessarily at home, okay. but are probably visiting grandparents at another district. Right. You are able to also follow through the 501 Academy. Mm -hmm. So what are the age ranges and how five, will it be divided? Five to Just, nine. Okay. So there, there are two groups, group one and group two, obviously younger and then older. Um, and so there's a, there's a schedule. I, I think the, the um, slides running will show that. Um, and so you do literacy and numeracy with the youngers and then you do literacy and numeracy with the olders. Now, as the chief pointed out, this is available online. Okay. So 
if you are at home as a parent and you would like your child to participate, and maybe you're not sure what level your child is, really you have the option to have your child do, if you say, okay, my child's reading skills are pretty strong, but I'm worried about math, well, you can have your child do an hour of math because they can do 30 minutes at the younger level and 30 minutes at the older level, okay. right? And the curriculum that's covered is, is tied into um, our revised yes, learning outcomes. The, the math is absolutely closely linked. We have two officers, um, Dr. Medina and Ms. Codd, who have worked on the math, the, the numeracy and the literacy. Um, the literacy really focuses on teaching reading and strengthening mm -hmm. reading um, over the course of the four weeks. But it's, it's absolutely mapped out, like day, week one, day one, week one, day two, just like that. Um, and it's tied. Last year, we started off using the results of the Belize Diagnostic mm -hmm. Assessment Test as a starting point to let us figure out what was needed. And this year, we've, we've built on the foundation. Mm -hmm. You know, and we're using feedback from teachers across the country, you know, to let us know how they feel students, um, where they are, what they're doing. The two groups ages are five to six is the first group, yeah. and then seven to nine. So mm -hmm. that's how we have broken the, the groups. So let's talk a bit about what the lessons look like. Uh, we're talking about uh, competency-based learning now. Uh, I would imagine it's a bit more hands-on for the kids and it will prepare them as we continue to roll out uh, the reformed curriculum. Some parents may not understand, uh, however, uh, what their child uh, is getting into. Uh, let's talk a bit about what the lessons look like when we think about newer reformed curriculum. Um, we prepared a toolkit mm -hmm. for okay. each of the centers and the toolkit had all the manipulatives and the resources oh, really? that the yeah. teachers are supposed to use. Um, the children could take a, a notebook and a pen. There was no necessary to take any other material because it's a short period, 30 minutes. What can you cover in 30 wow. minutes? So the lessons are very targeted and the children then after school are able or after the summer class are able to do more work and practice on the assignments given. So yeah. they're targeted with specific, um, for example, yesterday I looked at the numeracy, the literacy for the five to, to six and they were teaching the letter A so that we're using words and practicing with the students. So it's more a, a method of practice yeah. rather than a lot of theory yeah. so that they can practice those as they get home with their other brothers and sisters who did with mom and dad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's exciting. The teachers are dynamic, right? Mm -hmm. They're fantastic. So they're like mini movie stars <laughs> in the studio, you know, because right. they're, they're not just teaching really, they're mm -hmm. performing. And mm -hmm. last year, well, we, this camp just started yesterday. So today is literally day two. But last summer, it was fabulous to see how engaging the teachers were. So they'd be teaching, but they were also singing and dancing and wearing costumes. And last summer, as we tracked on social media and we tracked the comments, like the teacher would be teaching and asking questions and kids are answering in the comments. Yeah. So it was, oh, wow. it was a lot yeah. of fun. You could see the engagement. This, this idea of interactive learning, uh, engaging learning is nothing new for children in terms of uh, what they see on American television, right. for example, with a lot of their shows. Right. It's very engaging and, uh, uh, and they sit there and they interact and they learn. So to be able to bring this to the classroom, mm -hmm. I think it's a, it's a game changer uh, for our education system and for our kids. Is there anything here that also helps the teacher uh, going into the, the, the new school year and, and grabbing a hold? Because you have master teachers here, but I would imagine there are other teachers uh, that will need to uh, be equipped with this type of uh, skill so that they could carry on this level of teaching so that they could continue, so there's a level of continuity going into the school, school year. So that, that's an interesting question. One of the things that just last week in a conversation, we had someone say, 
well, you know what? Like, we'd be happy to work with teachers to help prepare them, mm -hmm. not not mm -hmm. with content, yeah, but with delivery, right? You That's know, it. to learn how because we found that some teachers who are fantastic teachers are really nervous in front of the camera, yeah. mm -hmm. right? So, so identifying the master teachers to do this additional work over the summer hasn't been the easiest thing. I would imagine, right? We we have a really small team at our ministry. Um, really small but they're they're super hard working and they've been wonderfully focused on getting this work done right mm -hmm. and they've been coaches as well for the teachers who have been involved in this process you know i, I wanted to mention that last year um our in the first four weeks we were averaging over a thousand views every day wow. Right. So we saw la from last year that there was definitely demand. There was definitely engagement. The, the second four weeks I mentioned that we'd seen a dip. Really, that dip dipped it within the 800s. So it wasn't like, you know, we a were significant. It, amount, yeah. We saw last year that we had constant engagement using social our ministry social media our 501 page the youtube channel it was really engaging we have space um for i think it's 1600 students yeah. right um across, and the across the country there's a jot form it's really easy to sign up if you sign up and you try to click on a school and it doesn't allow you that means that that school's four classrooms are full mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So because it, it, the, the form automatically mm -hmm. updates, right? Um, if you really, if, if, you know, the school is really close to you and as a parent, you really want your child, you, you, you can visit the school and ask the teacher. I mean, we've seen <laughs> that yeah. the teachers make space mm -hmm. um, still. But up to last night, I think we had a little over 800 registered wow. students already. And that's... For in class, for that's for in class. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's in class. Yes. So there are still some spaces um, if you want your child to participate in person. Obviously, it's unlimited for those who will stream online. Mm -hmm. And and for the online option, I, I want to point out that while it happens between nine and twelve in the mornings, Monday to Friday for the four weeks, that if you at if you're a working parent, for example, and you have your child, you know, in daycare or with a caregiver who is unable to support, if you want to grab that 30 minutes and replay it in the evening when you're at home, you can do that. Yeah. It's fine. Or if you have a nine year old and you're thinking, I need to go back, you have the option to go back and, and work with your nine year old on the lower level if you feel uh, repetition is the mother of learning right mm -hmm. going over basics doesn't hurt anyone yeah. so it, it's really a versatile option for parents what what, what I, I like uh, you're telling you're saying that these teachers they're actually in a studio well, yeah. well it's pre-recorded correct no it's no. live so it's live it's they're live. actually coming live they to you from live. a studio that. And I have to give our team a plug also, mm -hmm. Carlos and um, and Dr. Medina, and we have an intern named Noor who jumped in and, yeah. and been wonderful. Yeah. Um, Namrita is part of the team, but she's not here. We didn't have a studio available to us this year, and so these guys have converted a little room at our office wow. into a studio. Yeah. Um, so yeah. and, and so there's signs up all over the building to say "Shh, audio recording in progress." <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, but but it, this is happening live. I, from I, I, where time. where did this uh, idea come from? For for me, I like the fact that it's technology at work, technology at play to our advantage in teaching. Uh, our kids and educating our kids and uh, it's a very advanced concept yeah well this is you know teamwork yeah. <laughs> UNICEF. Yeah. and our ministry is the ministry of education culture science and technology important Indeed. for us to, there you go. Yeah. to provide digital learning to yeah. um to our schools so we are moving i there are a number of our schools that are um, on the connect ed program mm -hmm. so also those schools had to have that internet connectivity in order to, for them to 
to provide that. But you also asked a very important question as uh, what support is there for teachers? And I um, must say that for this, uh, from January to June, we identified a coach teacher in every district to provide support. And we are moving with, with that same um, uh, concept for the new school year because that was a pilot year. Mm -hmm. And so now this year is actually when things will be happening. And, and teachers will be asking, what next can I do? Mm -hmm. What other support can be provided? So we have identified a teacher in every district to support our primary schools. Excellent. So remind us when uh, this program actually begins. When is so the, the Let's, let's catch, catch Up Summer Camp started, started yesterday. It started yesterday. It started yesterday. Today okay. is day two. It runs Mondays to Fridays for the next four weeks. So and it goes only 30 minutes long. It's, it's 30 minutes of literacy and 30 minutes of numeracy for each group, mm -hmm. right? Um, so they're, they're 30 minute slots. I think we, there you go. There's your schedule mm -hmm. up there, literacy level one and then numeracy level one. And then we go into the level twos. And you know, really we have to say publicly that we are so grateful to UNICEF. Mm -hmm. Because when you asked about where the idea came from, last year when we were talking about the, the challenges of catching up students, the challenges that we saw in the classroom, the challenges that were being um, shared with us by parents. And we're also talking about the need to transform education. This is a commitment that our country has, as do other countries across the world. And UNICEF was such a strong partner from last year saying, how can we help? How can we support? And last year, they were fully supportive of the Let's Catch Up Summer Camp. And this year as well, um, they, they have said, I mean, months ago, they said, are we going to do this again? Because we're here with you. And yeah. they really have walked with us every step of the way. Um, and then there's one more thing that yeah. I want to mention. And that is that in PG, where we recognize that the prevalence of Internet is not as strong. Yeah. Last year, we worked with um, Sunshine Radio because they broadcast in a lot of the villages. And so we're, we're negotiating with them again right now because they will broadcast these lessons as well. So you can catch the lessons on oh, radio yes. as well. There you go. Um, which is not a new concept not, because yeah. I'm at the risk of dating myself, I, I can remember <laughs> radio programs yeah, that taught us about. things, <laughs> yeah. right? But it, I, I think a program like this is wonderful proof of, of evolution. Mm -hmm of how we can come so far, but that we still have to acknowledge our roots, yeah. that we don't lose sight of tradition. We don't throw away the foundational things that are important, whether it's, it's what we're actually teaching or it's how we're teaching. Mm -hmm. This is what's important. And it's, it's really what we've been trying to do um, across our ministry. Uh, just uh, remind our, our viewers one more time how they can sign up to have their kids go to the learning centers. We have, um, you, you can go to the website, okay. um, there are flyers that we have posted, um, there are links right there, you can go to 501academy.edu.bz and it's right there, there's a page on 501 that's specifically for Let's Catch Up Summer Camp 2023. Okay. And so if, if you want to do it online right now, that's the easiest way. Our district centers, our district education centers have been fabulous in their networking mm -hmm. because even before we made the link live, they, were they had things. shared yeah. and we had the first 500 signups in less than 24 hours yeah. mm -hmm. just from the district education yeah. centers sharing with principals, with teachers, yeah, with the community, right? So within your district, that link is already being circulated if, uh, as, a, as a WhatsApp link, all right? And it's also something that you can find online. Um, and parents can reach out to their teachers. Um, mm -hmm. The teachers have the link or the yes. principals of the respective schools. Principals have the link. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, ladies, do you guys have any last words that you'd like to share with us before we wrap things up? I would just like to say that it's important that we be cognizant of the um, needs of sustainable goal number four, which is um, quality education. And I believe this is a part of how we can address the, the needs of the students in, in our country. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're grateful um, for UNICEF. We're grateful for those master teachers, those teacher facilitators, those center coordinators, 
all the elements that have come into play to make this happen. I'm from from sending cleaning supplies for those schools to making sure that those rooms are open and clean, yeah. making sure that every room has access to a projector and a screen. It's it's fabulous to see the, um, you know, you, you, you look at the pictures of the classes and you see the master teacher on screen, but the children are all engaged. Right. Yeah. You know, they're doing their dances and the kids are there doing the dances as well. This, is, this has been such a team effort and we're grateful to every person who has been part of making this happen um, because we, we do what we do for the kids yeah right yeah. Excellent. Yeah. thank you ladies thank so much for joining sure. us we appreciate the information I know that uh, the parents are also appreciative of this Avenue that they can take advantage of this summer uh, for their kids as well thank all right you. Thank we're gonna you. take thank a break and when we come back we'll be joined by the Belize project Belize to talk to us about their upcoming gala don't go away.